Good evening, Brian McDonough. Good evening. First of all, thanks for being with us. Um, as Director of Social Actions Office of the Catholic Diocese of Montreal, could you explain how the Church is involved and supports the uh, homeless people? First of all, I should point out that many, many of our parishes, especially in the inner city, welcome and help persons who are living in the streets, homeless persons, and families that are in great difficulty. But in addition to that work, important work done by our parish communities, uh, here at the Archdiocese on the 15th of every month, uh, we welcome street people, about 70, 80 persons in all, basically by giving a few, out a few bucks, which often the persons pool together to buy, let's say, a roasted chicken or a pizza. I want to add also that we welcome people, know them by their name, find out a little bit more what's happening in their lives. So that welcome is also an important dimension. And also in certain um, urgent situations, I will get involved in finding uh, the kind of uh, resources that they need and direct them to organizations or agencies that can help them with this urgent need. The government of Quebec wishes to implement a real policy for the homeless people. How is it perceived by the different community actors? Well, the announcement by the government of Quebec that a policy regarding homelessness will be implemented is really much awaited and is actually good news. There's a lot, a lot of work that has to be done. First of all, in finding adequate housing for such persons, especially persons who are dealing with psychiatric problems who need special assistance. There's also another phenomenon, uh, the reality of persons who have, uh, because they've been living in the street or other reasons, severe health problems. Now persons will go, for example, to hospitals, the emergency rooms, CLSC to be able to get assistance. But there's something that really needs to be implemented to ensure there's adequate follow-up to help these peace people who are in a very vulnerable situation. There's also another aspect, I think there has to be greater collaboration at the different levels of government, the federal level, provincial level, and municipal government, to be able to assist these persons and also to ensure that their rights as citizens are respected. Too often in the past, uh, such persons that live in the street have been hassled, intimidated, uh, threatened by uh, peace officers or security guards, um, how to ensure that their rights as citizens are respected. When we speak of homeless people, we often have a stereotyped image. Uh, however, their profile has changed over the time. Can you tell us more about it? Yes. Uh, often we have the stereotyped image of the village drunk. Mm -hmm. But that's really no longer the case. There are new persons that are joining the ranks of the homeless in our uh, city. I'm thinking, for example, about people, often men in their 50s. Often these are persons who have worked all their lives uh, in a factory or in a small uh, a store. And suddenly, when the factory closes uh, and their job is terminated, these persons find themselves without any resources. Things become even more difficult when, for example, they've gone through a marriage breakdown or are going through a depression, and they just, at one point, are unable to pay their rent and find themselves in the street. These persons basically go from shelter to shelter, uh, soup kitchen to soup kitchen, until they arrive at the age of 65 and are able to get a old age pension. This is a new phenomenon. It's a disturbing phenomenon, especially prevalent among men. There's another reality too, where we're seeing more and more First Nations persons as well as Inuit that are leaving their communities and joining the ranks of the hopeless here in Montreal. Uh, something that we don't often appreciate is that many communities uh, in the North Inuit communities as well as First Nations communities are currently experiencing an important uh, increase in population. So much so that in certain communities there's just too many people. The housing conditions are such that uh, you cannot 
welcome. You cannot live together in a peaceful way. It also contributes to the deterioration of social conditions. So you have people having problems more and more with alcohol or with a drug addiction that leads to um, uh, violence. Promiscuity also makes the situation much more difficult for women and for children. And you have people leaving these communities. Some of them banished, some of them feeling that they have to leave those communities for their own security. And these people eventually end up in the city. Unfortunately, it reinforces certain kinds of stereotypes that people have about First Nations and Inuit people. You know, well, I am talking about a very small minority, but they are increasingly present among street people. There's also the reality of young people. Young people who, for example, uh, um, have decided to remain in the big city and uh, are perhaps uh, dealing with drug addiction and to be able to feed their drug addiction have turned to prostitution and over time find themselves in the street in a very vulnerable situation. And another group that I have to point out, and this is something that was not seen as much before, is the presence of women. Indeed, women with children in the street. And uh, m there are certain resources that are specifically designed for women and for women and children. But these resources are becoming more and more overwhelmed by the number of people that require their help. As you know, homeless, uh, homelessness is a growing phenomenon in Quebec. In your opinion, is there really a way to counter this? Well, in uh, research that was done about a dozen years ago, we talked about 28,000 street people. I'm suggesting that now their numbers are closer to 35, maybe 36,000 people. So we're talking about a lot, a lot of people. And um, we're talking about people that are, whose lives are characterized, first of all, by exclusion. Nobody wants them around. Uh, people will phone and say, we don't want you around and call up the cops upon them, or they'll just be bullied. So this is a real phenomenon of exclusion. People also living in great deal of instability. No money in their pocket, not knowing where they're going to eat next, where they'll be able to stay. And also a population that is confronted by many different converging problems not just one difficulty in terms of economic poverty, but often dealing with psychiatric problems and alcoholism and drug addiction and loneliness, profound loneliness. Uh, so I think here we're confronted with a set of realities that require um, a, a complex set of solutions. Certainly, I think that their right to be in the city to be respected as citizens needs to be recognized. A few years ago, people who were living in the street were receiving systematically tickets. And uh, since they obviously didn't have the means of paying them, they would eventually uh, be picked up by the police and incarcerated, um, which led to other problems, especially among those who had problems of a psychiatric nature. Prison is not a good place to be if you've got psychiatric difficulties. Though these days it's so cold out, you could think of prison as a, not a bad, such a bad place to be. But basically, the fact that people were being intimidated, bullied, often by peace officers or by agents in the metro, raised a lot, a lot of questions. And then there is the reality of people in the street who acquire certain psychiatric um, difficulties, problems. Uh, you'll recall, but last year there was a tragic set of circumstances whereby street people with psychiatric difficulties were perceived by police officers as being a threat, and indeed it led to their deaths. This is something that must not be repeated. This is a, something that was absolutely unacceptable. Um, indeed, for the people in living in the street, this kind of incidents really create a lot of terror. So it's a real issue to look at. Now, one of the things that I can point out is kind of good news is that there is greater collaboration between especially trained social workers and um, police officers and patrol cars so that when such an incident happens, uh, there's not an overreaction. 
And also, uh, last uh, fall, Quebec government and the uh, um, government of the city of Montreal um, promised to put in place uh, long-term uh, residences for people living in the street but who have psychiatric difficulties. We need a lot more dwellings and shelters for people that have long-term difficulties. This is, I think, important. Mm -hmm. Well, Brian McDonough, thank you very much for your time. It's been a delight. Thank you.